DNA is the inherited material of life and it is where genes are structured. So we inherit half of our DNA from our mothers and half of our DNA from our fathers. And within the DNA are the genes that encode for all the structures of the body. So the DNA is like a blueprint. Just like an architect has a blueprint for a building, the DNA is the blueprint for the, all the structures of the body. So when the, a gene is switched on to function, the information within that gene is being used to manufacture a protein. And that protein is then builds the structure of the body. And then proteins in the form of enzymes carry out all of the chemical reactions of the body that constitute the, the living organism. Genetically modified organisms are living beings where genetics or DNA of one species is taken out and transported into artificially into another organism. And in other words, some sort of genetic manipulation, genetic engineering has occurred by taking out the gene of one organism and transplanting that into another organism. Nature, God if you like, does not permit that. You cannot take the gene of a bacteria and put it into a pig or a people or anything like that or vice versa. Scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Now the process itself creates massive collateral damage in the plant or animal, but they don't test for those changes and the side effects before they introduce, say, the crop into our food supply. When the GM gene is introduced into the plant, the en genetic engineer has no control over where the GM gene integrates or splices into the DNA of the plant. And the effect of this is that the GM transformation process as a whole actually is very disruptive on the DNA structure and function of the organism. As a result, very unpredictable and potentially hazardous outcomes. Because if you disturb the balance of gene function, remember the gene function is controlling the structure and the biochemistry of the organism. If you disrupt the balance of gene function, you disrupt the biochemistry. And if you disrupt the biochemistry, you run the risks of creating novel toxins, novel allergies, as well as a disturbance to nutritional value. These types of outcomes resulting from the disruptive effect of the GM transformation process have been observed, are observable, and they're genuine. With our understanding of epigenetics, the new science of how environmental signals control our genes, we're introduced into the chemistry of where do the signals come from that select the genes and modify our genetic activity. Well, we used to say everything was due to the genes, but now we find there's a class of molecules called microRNA. They're very small RNA molecules, and they're found in all the cells. And these microRNA molecules are molecules that adjust the reading of our genes and change the readout of the genes. Well, a new understanding has been found about the microRNA molecules, and it says this. When we eat food, the microRNA from the food is picked up by the digestive system and not broken down. The microRNA is taken into our own body intact. And now what they followed is the microRNA from food ends up in our own cells, like in our liver and other cells in our body. And these microRNAs still have the same function. They change our genetics and they change our readout of our, our genome. And the significance is profound. It says when you eat genetically modified foods, we are eating a new class of microRNAs that have never really been in the world before. And yet, these microRNAs are picked up by our biology and adjust our own genetics. So, in a sense, the old story, we are what we eat, actually now has a biochemical foundation. And then all of a sudden it says, if that's true, then why would you risk your life eating a genetically modified food containing microRNAs that can totally distort our own biology and cause great problems in our lives? The process of genetic modification is a completely irreversible process. 
once it has been carried out, it affects the reproductive cells of the organism. So any effect you have, for good or for bad, is then passed down through the subsequent generations of that particular organism. And that's true for plants and animals, indeed for any genetically modified organism. And this now has to be understood because when we eat genetically modified foods, not only does it affect our own cells like that, but we also know that the bacteria in our gut that are required for our survival, we need these bacteria. The bacteria also pick up the genetic engineered genes and we modified the gut bacteria. And you say, well, why is that relevant? Well, not only do we need the gut bacteria for our survival, but the gut bacteria change our genetics. Information from the bacteria is picked up by the digestive cells and adjusts the digestive system cells to be compatible with the bacteria in our gut. There is a dialogue and a communication. If you alter the genetics of the gut bacteria, by definition, you completely altered the development and genetics of our own cells. Way back in the 70s, the, they developed this grand vision of being able to uh, splice in uh, high yield and drought resistance and all sorts of you know, uh, pest resistance and they dreamt of patenting those genes and having proprietary ownership of these genes. Uh, and during the 80s, that indeed came about uh, from a, a number of court decisions. They believed they could make billions of dollars from these proprietary uh, gene transfers and to, to make food do certain things or crops do certain things. When the evidence came out that there were fundamental flaws in the genetics, they just did not want to know. They didn't, didn't want to do the research into these issues of food safety. And they went ahead with their development, yet they weren't doing the basic research. You see, GMOs are the product of an infant science. And now we are feeding that product to the entire population. And it's known to create unpredicted side effects. And no one is testing to see if the rise in all these diseases since GMOs were introduced in the mid-90s is caused or promoted by these GMOs. If Monsanto's patent on a gene, that, if that patent on a gene gets into any, and I'll use the term, higher life form. So what does that mean? Birds, bees, animals, and the question I have to ask, what about human life? If, they, if Monsanto's patent gene gets into you, gets into me, does that say they own me? Do they own you? These are all questions that are very, that the courts and our governments will have to be, have to address how far does the patents on genes on life go? There have been uh, over 140 lawsuits filed by Monsanto against farmers, uh, including against those farmers who wanted nothing to do with Monsanto's genetically modified seed. CBS Evening News did a lengthy profile about a family farm by uh, David and Don Runyon. The Runyons charge biotech giant Monsanto sent investigators to their home unannounced and later threatened to sue them for patent infringement. I wasn't using their products, but yet here they were pounding on my door, demanding information, demanding records. It was just strictly harassment, is all, all I, I feel as if it was. Yes. The Runyons say they signed no agreements, and if their land was contaminated with the genetically modified seed, it blew over from a neighboring farm. Pollination occurs, wind drift occurs, there's just no way to keep their products from landing in our fields. In February 2005, the Runyons received this letter from Monsanto citing an agreement with the State Department of Agriculture, giving it the right to come on their land and test for seed contamination. Only one problem. The Indiana Department of Agriculture didn't exist until two months after that letter was sent. What does that say to you? So I'm not aware of the specific situation I'm in I'm just Indiana. talking in general terms. Would Monsanto lie, deceive, intimidate, harass American farmers to protect its patents? With farmers as customers, I would say that is not our policy by any means. When you ask Monsanto whether genetically modified seed is natural, they have two answers, yes and no. And it depends on which side of Washington, D.C. they're talking. If they're at the FDA or the USDA, 
They say genetically modified seed is absolutely no different than natural food. It doesn't need to be tested, doesn't need to be labeled. The public doesn't need to know if their food's been genetically modified because it's no different. Then we're on, when they're on the other side of Washington, D.C., at the patent office, and the patent office is saying, well, you don't deserve a patent because your seed is no different than natural food. They say, oh, no, it's not. It's completely different. We've invented something brand new. It's radically different, and it's so inventive, we deserve not just one patent. We deserve entire portfolios of dozens and dozens of patents. Because the United States was the only country in the world, still is, that allowed genetically modified organisms or any organisms to be patented. Up until then, living organisms or their products could not be patented. So the patent for insulin, genetically modified insulin, produced in the E. coli bacteria, was given to Eli Lilly. Monsanto got it for RBGH, the bovine growth hormone. Increased levels of IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor 1, in the RBGH milk were responsible for major increases in different cancers. Now, this information I supplied to FDA Commissioner von Eschenbach in 2007. He ignored it. I supplied this information to Margaret Hamburg, Commissioner of the FDA. She ignored it. So here we have Margaret Hamburg, FDA Commissioner, being told that RBGH milk will increase risks of breast, colon, and prostate cancers and not doing anything about it. So we're dealing with FDA commissioners, which in this regard and in other regards, which I could document, have shown themselves to be recklessly irresponsible. What kind of a democracy are we in? When commercial interests, industri industry interests, take precedence of a public health, even when life is threatened, even when there are avoidable risks of cancer? What kind of Alice in Wonderland situation are we in? I have a book called Corrupt to the Core. In that book, I describe by quoting from a published speech by a Monsanto executive saying how they're going to control the whole world, not just by genetic modification, but they're going to take charge of the whole con whole world by influencing the White House, the White Hall, the French Parliament, and Canadian Parliament, and the Japanese Parliament. This is published information. How are they going to control the whole world?